Hi everybody and welcome to this extended let's play of Divinity Dragon Commander. We're going to be playing the beta today and we're going to do one turn in the single player campaign. Now before delving into uh, the footage of that turn, uh, I wanted to show you once again what Dragon Commander is all about and we'll do that by showing you a new version of a trailer which we released uh, a couple of months ago. Welcome recruit! to the Dragon Commander Academy. Sit down and listen up, for you've a long way to go yet before you'll be worthy of your title. Now, on your ship, you'll be surrounded by princesses, politicians, and other assorted parasites. Listen to their advice, but don't let them manipulate you. You are the commander, not them. Don't forget your studies of the art of war, and don't neglect the benefits of new technologies. Play your cards right, and outsmart your enemies by moving your armies about with great military cunning. When in battle yourself, close coordination between your land, air and sea forces is imperative. You have at your disposal formidable forces, but screw up and we'll all end up as demons chewing toys. So think and strategize to win the day. Oh, and by the by. Since you're a dragon after all, do you use your arsenal of unique powers from time to time? Nothing like a barrage of searing fireballs to seal the deal! And in case you need practice, and you will, you can always take on other dragon knights to hone your skills. You probably won't last much longer than the others, but perhaps you'll surprise us and lead us to victory! Give it a shot, why don't you? Larian Studios presents Divinity Dragon Commander. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sven Winke. I am the founder and creative director of Larian Studios, and my job today is to take you through a turn of Divinity Dragon Commander. So I'm playing the single-player campaign. I'm in turn five right now. Uh, I'm playing the beta version of the game, so it's not 100% finished yet. Uh, so you'll see some things which are unpolished or unfinished, but it should give you a good idea. So uh, at the beginning of each turn, uh, you see what uh, the media thinks of you in the form of this paper, The Revelum Times. And right now it's telling me that I'm uh, moderately popular amongst the imps, undead and dwarves, but I'm not that popular among the elves and lizards. That has everything to do with the fact that I've made certain political decisions which the elves and lizards didn't really like. Like, for instance, I voted for introducing conscription, uh, which is meaning that I'm going to get extra manpower each turn, and, uh, but by uh, obliging every single man. To join the army. Now I also have a typical tabloid headline which tells me that one of my generals told me to stuff it which is actually true and that also has to do with a decision which I took in the previous turn but we'll see a couple of examples of that so I won't explain what decision that was actually. Uh, you can see that I also gained a card from the previous turn so cards are like a form of favors and these favors can be used uh, to your advantage in combat. In this particular case, I received a card which is going to uh, weaken an enemy's shamans. And shamans are a kind of a medical unit, a healing unit, uh, so uh, I will be able to shoot uh, the enemy's shamans faster when I play this card. Uh, and that's the only card that I received this turn. So here we have my uh, General Edmund who wants to talk to me, I think. Uh, but let me first explain where I am. I'm in the war room of the Raven. The Raven is my capital ship. Uh, and I use it to navigate over the world as I wage war on my siblings because I am the dragon commander, I am a dragon knight who can turn myself into a dragon and I have a uh, rather formidable fleet at my disposal. So what do we see here? Um, well, this is the turn I'm in. Uh, here we see uh, the amount of gold that I'm gaining per turn and uh, how much gold I have in total. Here we're seeing how many uh, research points I have, which will allow me to research new technology, and that's me, obviously. So at the bottom of the screen I see a navigation bar, which allows me to go from room to room. Currently the four rooms are unlocked. Uh, so I can, for instance, uh, go to the bar, I can go to the engineering bay, uh, the royal chambers, and then the council room is closed for the moment. 
and this room will become uh, my princess room where I will get to uh, go once I have a princess aboard the ship. But for that I need to become uh, wealthier, fam more famous and definitely more powerful. So let's have a look at what Edmund Commander, has to say. Are they not truly the lowliest of all the races? Were it not for the hint of demon cunning in their blood, we most probably wouldn't speak to them as much okay, as Okay, so Edmund, um, who is a bit of a racist and thinks very highly of himself, uh, he is Strength telling me a story here. Ourselves. I'd exhale an existential sigh upon the hearing of such folly, yet give it no further thought, but for one day... Yes, involves him having to participate in an impish ritual. Now, Edmund hates the other species uh, explicitly, uh, so he only thinks that lizards should be allowed to survive, so that obviously is going to be a painful thing for him. Oh, yes. marmalade from an orc's behind than bow to an imp. My very reason for currying your draconic benevolence at this hour. Um, obviously, in a movie like this, you're going to see a couple of spoilers, but don't worry. Uh, there's really a lot of decisions like this in the game, so one spoiler, uh, more or less, will not make a very big difference because uh, a these situations are served to you randomly when you're playing the game, and b there's really a lot of them. So what am I going to tell him? Well, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to give him a break actually. I mean, because let's see if Edmund likes me because I'm a dragon. I'll lend him my signet ring, and um, that should help him out. I guess, right? The most salubrious solution, Commander. Well, for it my seems to momentarily please him. Uh, we'll see how it works out in the next turn, undoubtedly. Okay. So let's have a look at what else we have here. Uh, so I can access the bar uh, where I have my other generals here. Um, so I can, for instance, I can talk to Prospera here. A couple of my generals are actually missing, so I don't know where they are. They must be on a mission somewhere. Fire upon Edmund's pride, Commander. The lizard lords have granted him the honor of representing. Yeah, so she's talking about Edmund's uh, issue. <laughs> she would like him to go to the M ceremony, so she's not going to be very happy about what I decide, but she doesn't know yet. Uh, let's go to the engineering bay, where I have my uh, friend Grumio. How's that jetpack working out for you, my lord? I knew you'd like it. Uh, so he's the guy who gives me all kind of technology. He gave me a jetpack, which works wonderfully well. He's one of the guys where I can spend uh, all of my uh, research points. So, for instance, here... I have already uh, researched uh, grenadiers, troopers, hunters, uh, which are like a jeep unit, I guess, uh, transporters, which allow me to uh, uh, bring my troops overseas. And I upgraded my troopers with enhanced engines, which allowed them to go at up to 160% of their original speed. So, And they're fairly fast, so that's a good idea. So now I have to decide what I'm going to spend my uh, 10 research points on. And I can spend five. These, all of these things cost me five research points. And this is a higher tier of technology for which I will be spending 10 research points. And then there's an even higher tier uh, with cool things like bomber balloons and ironclads and uh, really very nice uh, upgrades. And then there's an even higher tier uh, which cost me 20 research points. But even more stuff like teleportation for my hunters, for instance. Unfortunately, I only have 10, so I'll have to look at the lower side of the technology tree. And I'm going to give my grenadiers imp binoculars. And this will increase their attack range, and grenadiers are like a bazooka unit. So increased range will help me protect me from attacks uh, from the skies and attacks from um, mechanized units with fairly cheap um, cannon fodder, actually. So I can select to start research, and that's going to cost me 5 research points, or I can buy the research right away, which would cost me 10, but I'm just going to select the 5, and then next turn I'm going to have my binoculars. So I'm going to finish talking to Grumio and go to the Royal Chambers, where I have my trusted friend Maxos, who is uh, kind of a wizard. Never hesitate to seek my counsel, Dragon Knight. Tirelessly I study and question. We too shall unite dragon's daring with wizard's wisdom. Nothing. So I'm going to ask him to research stuff for me. And uh, I have five resource points left and I can, I can spend them on my dragon skills. So I already acquired two skills, Breaching Fire and Aura of Restoration. The Aura of Restoration is pretty cool. If I float over units with my dragon, they get healed automatically. And this uh, skill here 
is a skill that allows me to do more damage to dragons, medium and heavy units. Uh, so I don't use it when I'm dealing with uh, troopers or grenadiers, but I use it when I'm dealing with things like hunters or armors or juggernauts or uh, ironclads and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself... Um, I'm going to get myself the Aura of Annihilation on top of my Aura of Restoration because it's a permanent aura and my units are going to be doing more damage when I'm near them. So that's also going to be something that I'm going to get in the next turn. So eventually you finish talking to everybody, decide it's what technology you're going to research, what skills you're going to get for your dragon, and then you go to your strategy map, which basically introduces another phase in the game. So this is the small island for which we're currently fighting. It's um, uh, been a bit of a fight already, but I mean, I've only spent five turns. I started with this place here and already captured these uh, three areas. And this is going to be my moment. I think that I'm going to hurt the uh, AI here, who does have quite a lot of troops uh, in these territories here. But there's a couple of neutral territories here, these two islands. And I'm going to make a go for at least this island. And on, on that island there's an armor, which is new technology, which I don't have yet. And um, I will be able to capture it. And so what I'm going to do is I have my trooper here, uh, which has its enhanced engines, as you can see. And I'm going to load it into this transporter. And I'm going to move this transporter one, two, uh, to this island here. And I'm going to unload uh, my unit here. And next turn, this place is going to become mine because the neutral units are not going to attack me. They're just going to become mine. So that's going to give me an extra island with an extra building on top of it and with uh, two extra units. So units have move points. Uh, this was a, a two move point uh, move. So I had my transporter went one, two. Uh, but guys like these, for instance, only have one transport, uh, one move point. So if I'm going to uh, move these troopers, I'm going to attack this area here got six units uh, they are going to uh, manage to go there but they wouldn't be able to for instance uh, go over here because they only have one move point um, so let's see my chance to win currently is 34 percent as you can see uh, here on this country bar and i'm going to try to increase my chance to win by adding more units so i'm going to send these hunters here into the country which increases my chance to win to 43 percent which is pretty good and then this hunters, these hunters have two movement points also, so one, two. I can add them to my stack. So I got a 50% chance, so we even the odds. And the enemy has hunters, but they don't have any upgrades, so that's good. And he has uh, an equal amount of troops, but they don't have any upgrades either. And then he has grenadiers, which have enhanced explosives. So that's not cool. So that's going to hurt. I mean, they're going to do extra area damage. And then there's an also a transport here, which he used to bring those units uh, to this country. And there's a factory here. So this is an interesting uh, building because where there is a factory, you can build extra units. So talking about building units, I can buy units in my capital country. So I've got hunters, uh, grenadiers, uh, transporters and troopers at my disposal. And as you research technology, you get more and more units and each of these units become more versatile um, over the course of the campaign. Uh, we're here very early in chapter one of the uh, main campaign. So I'm going to build, uh, I guess I'm going to go for fast move, moving units, uh, hunters. So in the next turn I will be able to move them one, two, should I need to resupply. I will have to take care of this area here because they'll most likely try to invade it with these guys or, or he's going to reinforce it. I'm going to think he's going to reinforce it. So we know what I'm going to do. I'm going to move these guys into this transporter here and I'm going to move this transporter over here. And then I'm going to unload it and further increase my odds to 58%. But that's still not enough, uh, but it's going to be sufficient uh, for the moment. So once I finish doing all of my moves, I can uh, end my turn, which is what I'm going to do now. And then you see a summary of my moves and then you see what the enemy is moving, which is interesting because I made some assumptions about uh, his progress or her progress for this matter. And then you see a battle overview. Uh, so there was no attack here. Uh, I expected one or I was afraid of one, but actually enemy decided to reinforce this area. And uh, it probably 
We're going to have an interesting battle here. My chance to win low, it went lower from 53 to 51%. Um, as a result of an enemy action, so yeah, well, I mean, we'll just have to go for it. So I'll go to battle, and so now I have a choice. Um, I get asked who will lead the battle, so I can send one of my generals, like for instance our Edmund fellow here. Uh, he would uh, make my chance to win 55%, uh, but Henry would make it 58%. So this clear is a battle in which Henry would have a higher chance, and Scarlet would have 57 and Catherine 51. Now, I could also just leave it up to the army, which in this particular case would leave it at 51, so... Um, but, I can also go to battle in bat in dragon form. Now, typically, uh, each turn uh, in the main campaign gets you to fight on multiple fronts, and you can only be present as a dragon on one front, so you would have to select in which battle do I want to be a dragon, and then you would have to select where do I, do I place my generals. So we're dealing with quite a lot of enemy activity, so maybe we want to use one of the favors that we uh, gathered during the course of the game, and that's where the cards come to play. So I have multiple combat cards, and uh, these cards can give me bonuses for the duration of the fight. For instance, I can unlock the rejuvenation uh, skill for my dragon, uh, which is cool, and I can have a devastation, but I have it already, so I don't need to add it anymore. And then I get, get three Warlock Mercenaries. So look, see how that changed my odds? I went up with a couple of percentage points. And... Oh, this is this is a really this is a really good card. I get um, Imgreased Monkeys. It uh, upgrades the production of my Battle Forces, which is a kind of barracks, with 25%. So my units will go faster than the enemy, so I like that card. And what else, what else do I have? His shamans will have 75% less hit points. Now, he doesn't have them here yet, but I'm pretty sure he's going to build them in combat, and I don't know what cards he's going to play, so I'm just going to play it just in case. So, I could still retreat at this point, but I'm obviously going to go into combat. And so, the last decision I have to make before I go into combat is what skills am I going to take with me. And obviously, I have the rejuvenation skill, and I can basically put it somewhere here on the skill bar. And the reason why you have to do that is because these uh, skill buttons are immediately linked to your hotkey. So if I press the one on my keyboard, then I'm going to uh, activate Reaching Fire. Um, so let's start a battle and see what happens. So we're going to be playing uh, on what looks to be an ice map. All right. So, let's see. So I'm navigating the camera using my uh, cursor keys and my middle mouse button. There's the enemy and he's immediately <laughs> making a rush for it. So let's see what I have. I got a lot of hunters, so I'm going to send them against his hunters over here, protect myself there. And I don't have... these guys are not going to be very good against the hunters, but they're very fast because I upgraded them. They're faster than these guys. So he's actually making a rush for these capture points here. So I'm going to turn into a dragon, I'm going to assist my units. So you see that I can launch fireballs at the enemy. So And these are mechanized units, so I'm now activating my uh, skill which allows me to do more damage to mechanized units. And I don't have to worry about those infantries which are arriving. Although I do have to uh, worry about uh, that bazooka, well, that grenadier shooting at me. Uh, my units are doing pretty well right now. Uh, well, that was a big fight to start with actually. Okay. Let me just kill those guys and turn back into a commander because my grenadiers are doing an excellent job and I'm going to send my grenadiers, uh, sorry, my troopers over there and I the help my with my dragon further get rid of those guys. Excellent! So I'm turn back into human form and send those hunters to that base which is now going to become mine. So that was a really excellent move. So let's kill all of this. These are capture points, and once you've captured them, you can build on them. So I'm going to put crown turrets here. And these guys are basically dead meat at this point. They should actually... S oh, what's that? He is sending a transporter. Uh, luckily, I left those warlocks there. He's going to try to... Ah, and he's doing an invasion in the back. Look at that. What a little bugger. Okay, that transport is dead meat. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm using my jetpack powers. And I'm going to immediately... Well, no. I'm going to first build a base here. I'm going to build a battle forge. Remember that I have faster building of my units on the battle forge. And they're taking care of him. We're still working on the AI, so he's not that clever. Uh, and we're going to make sure nothing is coming out. This guy he doesn't have access to his primary 
uh, collection point for resources, which is this one, which is a recruitment citadel. So in this game, your a um, resources are recruits, which you use to train them into, for instance, troopers, or like I'm doing now, into grenadiers. So at the top of the screen here, we have uh, the balance of power is clearly moving in my direction. Uh, this is the amount of recruits that I've already recruited. This is the amount of population that from which I can recruit. So there is a limit to the amount of recruits that you can have. I think I actually have a fairly good force, so I'm going to immediately invade. And just in case, I'm going to put a waypoint here, which is going to help me uh, assault uh, their base. All right. So this is a anti-air, which is not very handy um, for my dragon. So I don't I want to go as a dragon here. So I'm going to send my troopers in here. Okay, I'm gonna build a turret here, anti-crowd turret, not an anti-air turret, because he doesn't have any air units yet. And it looks like this fight is gonna be easily mine, so these guys should get rid of the anti-air so I can join as a dragon. And really the AI should be surrendering itself now. It has no chance in hell. Oh, look at that. Uh, it doesn't have any chance anymore. Okay, I think it's time for me to join as a dragon, help a little bit. I'm gonna activate my penetrating rounds. So make sure to... Uh, okay, so it looks like it's going pretty well. The transporter over there... It's gone. We won. So all we have to worry about now are these buildings here. Which we will help blow up a little bit. I can actually control my units. When I am a dragon, uh, so if I press my F2 button, I can select everybody and I can tell them where to attack. So I just told them to attack this building, or I could just tell them to go and attack. Uh, I can give them different targets, so there you go. I just gave them targets. Well, that's not working 100% yet, but it's supposed to work. Oh, well, there's an anti-air. So allows me to introduce another mechanic. So as you can see, I can slow down time in single player, and this allows me to dodge bullets. Now it's very easy to dodge a single bullet. It becomes a lot har harder if there's a hundred bullets following you. So uh, you don't want to do this at home, basically. Well, you do actually, uh, but I guess you know what I mean. So I'm going to send my guys in. He's still trying to build, look at that. He really should give up at this point. You're gonna die. You're so dead AI. All right, still doesn't want to give up. Well, let's go and kill those turrets then. Uh, as I said, we're still working on the game, so victory conditions will be modified. So this was a fairly small battle. It was also a very small map. It was a, not such a big fight. I came in uh, with forces. They were relatively overwhelming. And indeed, my chance to win was higher. Uh, then his chance to win and obviously had the unique advantage of a dragon. So I may think at this point that I'm overpowered with my dragon, but if you play this game for a couple um, of turns, you will discover that the AI has a lot of technology at its disposal which can counter my technology, so life becomes interesting and you end up in this kind of Cold War situation. Anyway, the result of the battle is that I lost a number of units because I wasn't as efficient as I should have been, uh, but uh, he lost more units, so all in all it was a good battle. I've got two hunter squads left, I've got three trooper squads left, and my transporter survived. So the translation of units on the strategy map to units in combat is that, uh, for instance, one trooper pawn here uh, equates, I think, four troopers in combat. So we're now in the next turn and Revelant Times reports on events. It says that I gave my ring to the lizard and <laughs> made a nice headline of it out of it. Um, they're reporting on the fact that I'm winning. Uh, yeah, okay. And yeah, well, I need to do something about my elves and lizards. So I received from the end that a card, probably for a decision which I take took in the previous turns. My battle for another one of those battle force cards. Well, thank you, and it proves to be useful. Edmund is happy, and he gave me a combat card. Thank you, Edmund. And Maxwell is happy too. He gave me a card which will make the enemy's warlocks slower. So I got three cards which I add to my deck. So let's see uh, very rapidly what Edmund has to say. Here you go, Commander. I've been meaning to return your ring, though I admit I do so with a hint of reluctance. 
What little marvel it is, this ruby set, that, with the back of the hand emblazoned by your signet, I struck him firmly across the jaw, exclaiming, Feel the sting of the dragon! Crawl back from whence you can- I'll remember this episode fondly, Commander. Reminisce with a choice sherry as the sound of your ring-shattering impish jaw okay. resounds in well, my memory. Well, if you're happy, Edmund, I'm happy. All right, let's have a look here. Ah, we didn't see the throne room yet, so apparently the counselors came up with something. I am pleading here today on behalf of a dwarven miner who was cruelly left to his fate by his own kindred. An incident in the mines cost him his leg, and he is too poor to so pay. So they for want me to make a vote of what equates health care. Uh, so the game uh, features a whole bunch of political decisions that need to be taken by you as a player. And they actually affect a whole number of stats in the game, like how well the countries are defending and supporting you, and what technology will be available, how much gold you're making. Uh, so obviously this is one that's going to cost me money if I'm going to introduce healthcare. Um, so let's see what, what people have to say about it, actually. Let's see, uh, listen to Yorick here of the Undead. Uh. Just like diseases, accidents are simply punishments from the gods. If this misbegotten dwarf lost a leg, he probably took the Seven's names in vain, or forgot to say a prayer before dinner. All they right, saw it so he has his opinion. Well, I know what your opinion is. What do you have to say, Sir accident. For every broken nail and broken leg, we'll be paying through the note. So he's warning that the treasure only will bleed. Uh, let's see what she has to say of the lizards. If this miner uh, suffered such a dreadful injury while well, working, broke, then the mining corporation right. in charge should pay for his treatment. Hmm. And if they won't, or... And uh, let's see what our Tranquilo Shoreshoes has to say. Then without Among Us Imps. Comes with the territory, I suppose. All those volatile war machines. Most of our top inventors have more metal uh, than meat. So now I need to make a decision. Will I vote for or will I vote nay? Well, you guys will never know what I think about healthcare uh, because I'm not going to show you. Um, these decisions have consequences and I don't want to spoil too much for you. Uh, but it gives you an idea of what there is to do in the game. So, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to finish my Let's Play, because I promised only one turn, and this is actually a turn in a little bit. And uh, for sure, we're going to be show you, uh, showing you more things uh, over the coming weeks as we approach uh, the release of Divinity. Dragon Commander, thank you for listening, and until the next time. Bye-bye.